JSON is known as a file format that makes it easy to store structured data. Most programming languages, if not all of them, are having their libraries to parse JSON data to the relevant data type, which turns JSON into a data format that everyone should understand. And as you can see here in the example, JSON files should be created in a way that your key value pairs are stored under a curly bracket. You can see that each line has a key value pair where, for example, name could have a value like Jim or different kinds of information could be also stored under different key names. You could store strings, integers, booleans, or a null value like the last line here in this example. Now, when you deal with JSON files, you always want to get used working with double quotes because creating JSON files with single quotes is always going to complain about how the file format is not valid. So that's why you wanna get used working with double quotes. So in the rest of the video, we are going to understand in what different scenarios you can face JSON files. And also we will show a couple of examples how the Python programming language deals with JSON files and how we can parse JSON data. Let's get started. All right, so that is the file that we will use as an example so that you can see how Python works with JSON files. Now you can find this in my repository of code snippets that is going to be available in my description, of course. Now looking in this file compared to what I showed in the introduction of this tutorial, the only real difference that might seem not familiar is the line number four, where you see friends equal to some square bracket that has some hidden information. So those two lines are familiar because strings, integers, or null values is something that we know that we can store. But inside this friends key, now we see that we also have an information inside a square bracket that also includes a curly bracket. We should understand that in a JSON file, we can also store a nested object under a single key name. And that is perfect for covering scenarios where you want to store data that has to be declared multiple times somehow. For example, in case that I want to describe friends of some person, then that is the perfect scenario to cover that. So you can see that I have a square bracket, and then inside of that I have a new object that just declares a single friend right now, and it has a name and an age, and I could simply go ahead and create one more object here inside this friends array, okay? So I can add a comma and copy and paste this section and that will mean that I add a new friend to this friend's key, okay? So I can change this to something like Chris um, K, for example, and age will be 37. So that is the beauty storing nested objects under a key name. Now let's see how Python really deals with reading JSON files. So working with our Python file now, you can see that in the first line, I try to import the JSON module in order to interact with JSON files. That's the module to go with when you deal with JSON data. And in the other line, I basically store the file of the name, okay, simple.json. So now we need to go ahead and read the file and basically see how you can parse the JSON data to Python data type. So it's going to be something like the following. We are going to wait open and then we are going to open the file name and we only want to read the content of the file. So R inside a string will do that. And then once we provide the arguments to the open function, we will use a variable as if and inside here we will use json.load and then we will pass in df which is a file object now if you never saw this line this fifth line basically this is a way that you read files in python and if it doesn't seem familiar to you at all then you might want to consider watching my file object tutorial which goes much deeper explaining about how to read and write to basic files Okay, so this line here is going to be responsible to parse JSON data to Python data, but we need to store this under a variable name. So data equals to json.load and then the file object, which is passed here. Now I can go out of the indentation, which is inside the with open, and then I can basically print data like that. So if we take a look at this, then you can see that this is just a dictionary now. So you can see that it is a dictionary with name equals to John Doe, then a comma, and there we have one more key. 
And then we have the friends key, which is just equal to a list. Now you can see that the other key is equal to none. And there's a great reason for that because when we deal with Python data, then if you want to describe a value that basically means nothing, in Python we say none, unlike the JSON data or some programming languages that are using the term of null. So it is an important point to understand here. Now, if I go ahead and say um, type of this data, then we will receive a dictionary. And since that is a dictionary, I can use some methods to retrieve the values of some keys. Now, if we try to go and use data.get, and if we try to get the value for the key of friends, then we should be receiving here class list because friends is just a list with another two dictionaries inside of it. So you can see that this is really the result here. Now in the description, you can find a link where you will see which JSON data type is converted into which Python data type. So you can really get along with using JSON data within your project. Okay, so now we deleted almost the entire file. Now we will see what other functions are extremely useful within the JSON module. Now, of course, the exact opposite action is also something that you can do. For example, taking a dictionary kind of data and convert it to a JSON file and in addition store it under a JSON file. Now, that might be something that you especially want to do when you deal with object-oriented programs because there you have multiple objects that you create and maybe you want to store the metadata about each object inside a JSON file. So we are going to simulate this exact situation right now. So if we consider the following class that you can see that its name is person and inside the init method it takes two parameters and this will basically mean that we define this person object by two important attributes, name and age. And if we go ahead and print the type of P1 then it is basically a person kind of data so called. Now for each object that you create you can also print the dictionary version of this object so this means that i can go ahead and use p1 dot double underscore dict double underscore and this will be responsible to gather all the instance attributes and put them under a dictionary you can see how the output is nice and clean now that might be extremely useful for this case i might want to take this dictionary which defines the person object and maybe store it in a json file in order to keep it permanent for other projects or basically any reason that you think about so let's see how we can do that so i will delete that line and i will just go ahead and say again with open and this time we want to create a new file let's name this p1.json and then we want to write to that new file. So it will be W and we will use the F variable again. And now we are about to use a new function, which is json.dump. Dump basically does the exact opposite action. It takes a Python data type and tries to convert it to a JSON data. Now, most of the times, and I'm saying most by the purpose, the data type that you want to parse back to JSON will be dictionaries. Sometimes it might be also a list of dictionaries, but most of the time it is going to be a dictionary. So I recommend working with dictionaries when you want to convert to JSON. So the data that I want to convert is p1 dot double underscore dict double underscore. And what is the file that I want to write to? And of course it is the f which we use as a file object here. Now this takes in one more special argument which is really nice. You can decide the number of indentations between keys and values. And the more indentation you use, it will just make it readable. I like the value of four in that case. And now let's see what this will be responsible to. So I'm going to go ahead and run our code and you can see that it has been done successfully. Now taking a look inside our p1.json, you can see how nice it looks and it used four indents. So it means one, two, three, and four. I can increase or decrease this value. If you like to, you can do that. So in general, the dump function is really useful for that case, taking in dictionaries or a list and try to convert them back to JSON and store it under a JSON file. So meanwhile, we explore important functions inside the JSON module. 
we need to understand the motivation why being familiar with JSON is very important. Now, when we deal with REST APIs, then this is the number one reason for me why JSON is very important to mix in your development lifecycle. Now, for those that did not hear about what a REST API is, then I will use a minute or two to explain very shortly what it does and why do we need REST APIs. Now, when we work with different websites, HTML is going to be the language that is responsible to give you the page that basically displayed on the web browser. But if we want to automate something or analyze or read this data quickly, then this is going to be very hard because this is HTML. But what if we could return a response like a JSON response from those websites? This could be very easily parsed to a dictionary in Python, for example. So when we talk about different websites that delivers you data as JSON responses, then those are defined as web servers that are called REST APIs. We can think of a REST API as a unique kind of a web server that gives you a chunk of data as JSON so it will be friendly and easy for you to work with. And you can also create your own REST APIs with frameworks like Django REST framework. In frameworks like the Django REST framework, you can deliver your own data to the world and you can also customize permissions for different people that only those people will edit the JSONs in this web server, for example. So like I mentioned earlier, if we work with APIs, usually it requires authentication and so on, but I searched some APIs that are easy to work with so we can get along quickly. And I found out this website, which gives you chunk of API servers that you can already start work with them. You can see that there are free APIs for finance, sports, travel, and more data, which is quite nice. So I just picked up one of those and I wrote those four lines, three lines of code in my PyCharm. So you can see that I'm using the request library, which allows us just to perform a request in the background. But this is a library that you have to go ahead and use a pip install for that. So before you try out, just do that quickly in your terminal. And you can see that I'm using the get method. And I just found out a website that gives you the current cryptocurrencies or something like that. So we will see what JSON data it retrieves when we perform this request. And right after that, I go ahead and try to print the text that we receive back. Now, that is the unusual situation. We are not going to receive HTMLs and so on. We will receive JSON. So let's see what that's going to look like. So I'm going to run this. And you can see that we totally receive a JSON. But if we go ahead and use a type and we wrap rec.text, then that's going to be a string. So this means that we have a new situation that we did not face yet, but that is easy to overcome because inside the JSON library, we have a method that is called load s, which allows us to load JSONs that are delivered as strings by default. So this means that I can go ahead and use a statement like the following. So if I say data, equals to json.load is. And of course, this will take in that string. And now if I go ahead and try to print the data, and in addition, I will launch the built-in type method. So you will see that it will be a dictionary. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see the result. So load s is one more extremely useful function that you will see when you explore projects or you write by your own. And you can see that it totally converted it into a dictionary, which is extremely useful. Now, this function here does have the opposite action as well. You can use a function that will take in a Python object, meaning the dictionary, and then it will convert it back to string. Sometimes it might be useful. I'm not saying that this is the function that I used a lot in my projects, but just to show you, if you will go ahead and let's delete that line and also this one, you can go ahead and use str json equals to json.dumps. This will take in a Python object, meaning a dictionary that was already converted from JSON. So you can basically pass in here data. And if we now print str json and also the type of str json, then the result is as expected. Although the output looks familiar and pretty much the same, but that is a string. 
So this is an important note. So those four functions are the most useful functions when it comes to dealing with um, JSON data. Okay, so I really hope everyone enjoyed in this video. If so, please hit the like button. It will help me a lot to spread this video on YouTube and subscribe to my channel if you already did not. I will see you in my next tutorial.